This is for Year 11 methods and it's work to cover 3.2, the remainder theorem and the factor theorem. We learned from the last lesson how to make these divisions. In case you're unsure, you can look at the video regarding the division of polynomials, but I'm just going to go ahead and do these. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've done these divisions. In the first case, I got a remainder of 23. In the second, I got a remainder of 8. In the third, I got a remainder of 8. And in the fourth, I got a remainder of 0. Now in the book, they'll tell you about the remainder theorem. It says that when p of x is divided by x plus a, then p, the remainder will equal p of negative a. So if I look in this particular case, if this is my p of x, my numerator, and it's divided by x minus 2, then the remainder should equal p of not negative 2, but positive 2. So if I put a 2 there, I'd get 2 squared, plus 7 times 2 is 14, plus 5. 4 plus 14 is 18, plus 5 equals 23. And that's exactly what my remainder was. Let's see if it works in this case. If I'm dividing by x minus 1, therefore p of 1 should equal the remainder. If I put in at 1 where x is, I get 8, and that's exactly what the remainder is. In the third case, if I put a 1 wherever x is, I'm going to get 1 squared, which is 1, plus 5, plus 2, and I do get a remainder of 8. And in the last example, if I put a negative 1 where x is, I'm going to have 2, Two times negative one squared will be two plus negative three plus one and that equals zero. Okay, so the remainder theorem says that if I look at my numerator and I work out when does that equal zero, so when x equals one, if I plug that into the numerator I can quickly find the remainder. That's what the remainder theorem is. The factor theorem states that if the remainder is zero, then x minus a has to be a factor of p of x. So that will help me find factors. So in this case, this remainder equals zero. Therefore, x, by, x plus one must be a factor of this particular quadratic. Okay, how might that be useful? Would it be useful if I'm trying to factorise something? If I'm trying to factorise a cubic or a quarter? Okay, question 4a out of 3.2 asks to find the linear factors of this cubic. Now, I can't find linear factors using any of the quadratic, quadratic rules because that's to do with quadratics. I need to use both the remainder theorem and the factor theorem to come up with a factor. And once I've found a factor, I'll then get into a division. So if I use p of 1, uh, that's not going to be much good because all of these are positive. That will be 1 plus 9 plus 23 plus 15. And that certainly doesn't equal 0. So it's pointless putting in positive numbers. If I use p of negative 1, it's going to be negative 1, because negative 1 cubed is negative 1, plus 9, minus 23, plus 15, which is negative 24, plus 24, which equals 0. Bingo. I found a remainder of 0. Since I found a remainder of 0, if p of negative 1 equals 0, Therefore, using the factor theorem, x plus 1 must be a factor. So, I'm going to divide x plus 1 into this cubic, x cubed 
plus 9x squared plus 23x plus 15. Okay, so I found this part, the last bit. X goes into 15x plus 15 times. Fifteen times x gives fifteen x So I've done my division, I got an answer of zero, which is what I wanted, a remainder of zero, that means that this is a factor, and this quadratic is also a factor and that that quadratic can actually be factorised into the linear factors of x and x, 5 and 3. So I know that this is broken into the factors x plus 1, x plus 5, and x plus 3. Three linear factors that multiply that give you that cubic. In the next video, I'm going to do some other examples out of 3.2.